This video will illustrate the dynamics between high-frequency traders and traditional trading by institutional investors. It will focus on a hypothetical and simplified example of latency arbitrage, where a high-frequency trader executes orders on a security while taking advantage of knowledge of pending orders from others due to differentiated latencies throughout the national market system. These are the three main parties involved in this scenario and their objectives. Wendy is an institutional investor with an interest in a particular stock. Wendy hopes to obtain several shares at a currently low price. Beatley & Bailey is a fictional stockbroker firm based in New York. B&B &B has a fiduciary responsibility to find the best deal for its customers while engaging multiple customers to maximize its profit from these trades. Jameson Electronic Trading is a fictional, high-frequency trading firm. Its servers are co-located at each exchange. These servers are connected to the other exchanges by high-speed communications networks, known as direct feeds. Jet wants to maximize its profits while minimizing its exposure to market risks by holding any particular stock for only a short period of time. Wendy looks up the National Best Bid and Offer, or NBBO, for Fast Futures Stock, a fictional leading producer of personal electronics. Currently, the National Best Offer is 2,000 shares for $10.04. The National Best Bid is 300 shares for $9.98. Wendy estimates the true value of the stock is at least $11, and she thinks a good purchase price is $10. She expects the price to rise rapidly in the next few weeks. She calls her broker, B&B, &B, and tells them to buy 10,000 shares with a limit price of $10. B&B &B enters the order into its Smart Order Routing Platform, or SOR. B&B knows that the best way to minimize the market impact of Wendy's large order is to break the order into smaller orders. So, B&B &B uses its SOR to break up the big order and begin to route the smaller orders into the market. B&B &B has gateways to all of the exchange's data centers in northern New Jersey. The New York Stock Exchange Euronext data center in Mawa the BATS and Chicago Stock Exchange Equinix data centers in Secaucus, and the NASDAQ data center in Carteret. B&B &B checks the NBBO to ensure compliance with SEC rules and then places a limit buy order for 1,000 shares at $10 at BZX, where B&B &B receives a maker rebate per share for any orders that result in a trade. Once B&B's order arrives at the BATS data center, it appears as the local best bid on BZX. The message updating the BZX quote is submitted to Tape A of the Securities Information Processor, or SIP, at Manhattan, which tracks activity on fast futures stock, like trades and quotes. After reaching the SIP, the updates to the NBBO will be relayed to the subscribers, including each of the exchanges. However, until that happens, each of the exchanges still have the older NBBO information. Meanwhile, JET's HFT algorithms notice the slightly larger bid of $10 at BZX and suspects that an institutional investor, through its broker, is trying to execute a large purchase, known as a block trade. They begin to monitor the direct feeds from the exchanges. The latency on the direct feeds is an order of magnitude smaller than the NBBO feed from the SIP, which allows JET to monitor order flow into the exchanges before they appear on the SIP. This difference in latencies allows JET's HFT algorithms to locate an arriving offer that is cheaper than Wendy's bid of $10 and quickly complete the buy trade before the NBBO updates with Wendy's bid. Suspecting that Wendy wants a lot more shares at that price, Jet continues to use its direct feeds to the other exchanges in order to beat Wendy to all natural counterparties to her order. 
This results in Wendy purchasing only shares that Jet bought first and resold to her. Each time that Jet can beat B and B to offers below the limit price of Wendy's bid, the result is lost savings to Wendy. By the time that Wendy's bid appears on the NBBO and travels back to each exchange, Jet has finished selling all of its fast forward stock to Wendy. Here we have depicted only the first of many trades that B and B must execute to fulfill Wendy's complete order. But it is this first trade that alerts Jet that an institutional investor might be trying to complete a block trade. So, in our simple example, Jet uses this approach against every B and B order. This eventually leads to the final execution for Wendy's order, as follows: Wendy has paid exactly her limit of ten dollars for all ten thousand shares of Fast Futures. B and B was paid a maker rebate for Wendy's ten thousand shares of volume. Jet made the difference between every share they bought at less than ten dollars and resold to Wendy for exactly ten dollars, minus the taker fees they paid to the exchanges. This example used a single HFT submitting orders, with a single SOR responding in turn. In reality, there are many HFT firms like Jet with similar algorithms, hundreds of brokers like BNB, and thousands of institutional investors like Wendy in the national market system. Their activity results in the need to transmit hundreds of thousands of orders and messages across the national market system. Every second.